Hello and welcome to our Pause for Prayer for this week. As we enter into the season of Advent, we're going to be thinking about some of the traditional themes of Advent, beginning today with hope. How might we make way for hope in our lives? Well, I'm going to read a few verses from Isaiah chapter 40. And the first 39 chapters of Isaiah are pretty difficult reading. Um, it's all about the sin and the woes of Israel and the nations around her and how God is going to, to come and take Israel off into exile. Um, God's judgment is going to come upon the people. But when you get to chapter 40, suddenly the whole tone of Isaiah changes. Uh, we go from, from judgment and despair to a new, a new thing that God is doing. And so I'm going to read from Isaiah 40, verses 1 to 5. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight in the wilderness a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places are plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed. And all mankind together will see it, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So the people in Isaiah's day needed to know that there was hope, even in the midst of the darkness and the despair and the judgment and the death. There was hope. God had not given up on his people. God would break in. God would do something new. And if you want to be encouraged, reading the second half of the book of Isaiah from chapter 40 to 66 is one way of doing that because it goes on to speak about God's new thing. And there's lots in there that might look ahead to Jesus. There's lots in there um, that looks ahead to God's new creation, the new heavens and the new earth that God is creating. So we need to make way for hope. And maybe you in your life need to make way for hope too. In the year 387, uh, an old preacher climbed into his pulpit in Antioch on Easter Sunday morning. And it had been a really tough year for the city. Food was in short supply, taxes had been racked up again, and out of desperation, people had taken to the streets in riots. And as a response, the Roman Empire had conscripted most of the men to fight in distant wars to the north, just leaving the women and children behind to scavenge for food. And the people despaired. The people believed that their lives would never improve. And when they came to church, no doubt they were expecting and hoping to hear some empathy. But they were surprised to hear their preacher, John Chrysostom, say this. He said, your resignation assumes that God is dead. Do not be so certain. He who has embraced death has defeated its power over us. He who went down to hell liberated every city held captive by hell's despair. Christ is risen. Open the doors of your comfortable despair that the great storms of hope may blow life into us once again. Challenging and encouraging words. And we need to hear those words because over 1600 years later, so much of our society is designed to help us get comfortable with despair, with darkness, with hopelessness. We live as if death is the end. We live as if Satan has had the last word. We live as if sorrow and pain are the only way. But Christmas, like Easter, show us that God is never comfortable with the darkness and the despair and the death and the hopelessness. God is never comfortable in leaving us as we are. God has a plan. The whole of scripture reveals to us God's plan. Right from the beginning, in Genesis chapter 3, when humans first led away, the, kind of walked away from God, God had a plan. It says there that, that one day, one of, one of Eve's children would come and would crush the serpent. It was looking ahead even then to Jesus. 
And we need to take hope in that. We need to take hope in the baby who will be born in that Bethlehem manger. Because God is working his purposes out. God says to us, as he said to the people in Isaiah's day, comfort, comfort my people. He says, prepare the way for the Lord. And so I want to encourage you in this season to prepare the way for the Lord in your life. Prepare the way for his hope to break in and to change you from the inside out. It might not be a comfortable process. It doesn't sound, does it, very comfortable with mountains being made low and rugged places being turned into a plain. There's going to be changes that are needed in our lives too. God's going to need to do a new thing in us. He's going to challenge our sins. He's going to challenge the ways that we, we do get comfortable with the darkness and the brokenness of our world. But as he does so, there will be new life. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you and we praise you that you are a God of hope. And we confess now, Lord, the times when we have got comfortable with the way that this world is. We get comfortable with our own sins. We get comfortable with the sins that are all around us, with the darkness and the brokenness and the pain. We get comfortable with the inequalities, with looking at the challenges of the world and thinking, well, they're just too big for us to do anything about them. And so we get comfortable with them. Father, I pray that you would shake us up. I pray that you would move us and inspire us and empower us to be people of hope, to be people who are witnesses to what you are doing in showing another way, in bringing new life, in bringing in your kingdom, your new creation that will change everything. So come and stir us up, I pray, Lord, today. Lift our spirits, lift our hearts, lift our hopes. In Jesus' name. Amen.